You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Heroes Advent. So the last place we left off, we got a little bit of a sparring match with uh, Max, and we, through some sheer luck, managed to get the best of him, and, uh, well, he jumped on us, and uh, we're getting all blushy, so, <laughs> Cassian's getting all blushy, so, anyway, guys, let's jump right back into it, let's see where these two get, will Max ever get the memo? <laughs> I don't know. He seems like he, he seems like he is actually just that thick-headed. But anyway, guys, please sit back and enjoy and entertain you for the next 20 minutes, and let's jump right in. Alarm 10, you're up, and let's go. Okay. I'm sorry I pounced on you so suddenly, but I think this might be a good lesson for you. Huh. He looked your nose, and you could feel your cheeks getting hotter. Hmm? <clears throat> well, let's get going, shall we? I'll treat you to dinner tonight. He stood up and gathered his clothes, leaving you still dazed on the ground. This is all still too much to process. Uh, are you okay, Cassian? Y yeah uh, I'm just still a bit frazzled. Did I hit you too hard? Might need to get you checked in case I gave you a concussion. It's all right. I'm fine, Max. All right, if you say so. Let's go wash up for now. Meet me at the tavern when you're done. Sh sure. Hmm. You washed up in the shower room after gathering your things. You picked a private shower to avoid seeing Max. What you experienced just now was just a little too much to handle. You finished cleaning up and have a walk in the guild's garden before having a nice dinner with Max. Afterwards, he escorted you back to your room. So, tomorrow is the tournament. Oh yeah, you're right. Uh, sh you sure we'd have time for the training? Of course. We can still have an early morning session before the event, and one more during and one more during for a good warm up. Oh, okay. I'll be cheering you on, Max. Max wagged his tail happily. That'd be nice, Cassian. I will do my best to put on a good show for you. You already pressed me enough, Max. So don't worry about tomorrow. Well, all right then. Get some rest for now. I'll pick you up tomorrow. All right. G good night, Max. Good night, Cassian. You went to bed as soon as you closed the door. As Max mentioned, the opening of the festival starts early in the morning, but the tournament will take place a few hours afterwards, so maybe you could still squeeze a warm-up session or two with Max. You closed your eyes, trying to empty your thoughts, but you couldn't shake off that feeling of his fur on your hands. Eventually, you managed to drift asleep, dreaming of something soft and fluffy. Oh. That was a, uh, amber alert. Oh, what's this? Uh-oh. Anytime he goes to a fucking dream, it's always bad. It's time. Uh-oh. Oh, shit. Uh-oh. You wake up to the sound of someone knocking on the door. You groggily went to see who it was. It took you a moment to find the doorknob, though. Oh. Good morning, Cassian. Did I wake you up? Yeah. Sorry to wake you up this early, Cassian, but we gotta get going. Today's the festival, and I'd want to do some exercising beforehand. Uh, something tells me something's gonna go very wrong. Sure, sure. C come on in. I'll get ready in a bit. Um, you might want to put on some pants first. Hmm? You looked down to your crotch and saw your sheath all exposed. Eh? <laughs> you quickly slammed the door in front of him. The shock and embarrassment was enough to snap your sleep-addled mind awake. You went to put on some pants before greeting Max at the door again. Sorry, you had to see that. I usually sleep naked. Is that a custom where you're from? No, it's a habit I picked up here. It can be quite hot wearing clothes with all this fur, so I find it more comfortable to sleep without any. That's why I always locked my door back at Alyssa's place. Didn't want her to, didn't want to make her see my, um, private parts. Understandable. Well, make yourself comfortable. I'll be back in a minute. I'm gonna take a shower first. Why don't you take it after the exercise? This early? Yeah, like I said, it'd be best if we could get some exercise done before the festival started. I already booked a room at the training facility. Oh, why not outside like usual? It's reserved for tenants. Lots of people are setting up shop there as we speak. Oh, well, all right then. Well, come on then. Let's head straight there. Every second counts. He yeah, got it. <laughs> You followed Max to the training room and started your usual morning exercise together. You went to take your shower afterwards, but Max insisted on doing even more exercise sets. He said he wanted to make sure he was in tip-top shape before the event. 
After he finished up, you both met up outside the training room and headed to the entrance. Whoa! Yep, lots of people came from all across the country to enjoy the festival. Really? Are, are you sure it's safe? I mean, won't there be any intruders among those people? I understand your concern. But in case you've forgotten, the burial prevents any corruption from entering. And there's Toby's division, too. Toby, huh? Yeah, he specializes in reconnaissance. He'll be the first to respond in case of suspicious activities. Oh, well, he's pretty quick, so I guess it makes sense. Well, it's not just about being quick. I also specialize in it, too, you know. I can use my sense of smell to identify different people. That's why on that day I could see him following us from miles away. Right, I thought you had some kind of sensory magic or something. Yeah, you could call it that, I guess. My sense of smell is quite strong. Too strong sometimes. For that reason, I don't like strong smelling food and fruits. It's like my nose is being poked by a bunch of needles. So you have a weakness too, huh? I thought you were supposed to be all strong and powerful. Nah, it's less a weak of a weakness and more of a nuisance. Uh, heh. Silly boys. Oh boy. I'm kind of suspicious of Toby. I don't know why. It's like a little feeling I have. Hmm. I hope he. I hope he's a good guy. I hope Toby's a good guy. You both headed to, to You both headed to Kobe. 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 Cody's booth. You could already see him and the Snow Leopard preparing the ingredients for their opening batch. Quite a few people were already queuing up before his booth. Looks like his food is going to be in high demand. Whew, I can't whistle. I'm just a guy. I can't whistle. I've never been able to whistle. I've always. I've tried so many times. I just can't. I, I, I can't whistle. I'm sorry. So. Whew. That's a long line. You sang my battleship. Let's go to the back. Are you sure it's okay? Well, unless you want to skip breakfast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> See? Your stomach disagrees. Let's go! He playfully tapped your belly and circled to the back of Cody's stand. He followed, after him after, he followed him after a bit of hesitation. The other people didn't seem to notice, at least. Hmm. <laughs> Cody and Ash briefly greeted you both as you enjoyed their first batch of food. It seemed rather similar to the food, finger food in your world. Nothing too out of the ordinary. Not that you are complaining, of course. Finally, you got to eat something else other than that same oatmeal breakfast. You finished up after helping yourself to some corn dogs, French toasts, and fruit slices. Mmm, sounds delicious. You followed Max for a light stroll around the festival bazaar. Max was rather hard pressed about preparing for the sports event, but it seemed like you still had plenty of time to kill. You took a moment to look around a little. The festival here didn't seem that much different from the carnivals in your world. Just a bunch of food stands, carnival games, souvenir shops, and a whole lot of people enjoying the atmosphere. So, Cassian, got anything you want to do now? You. <clears throat> Sorry about that. No, I, I didn't say anything. Um, not, I'm not quite sure. Well, if you're still hungry, you can always go to another food stand. There could always be some local treats you might want to try out. M maybe. There's also games you can win prizes on, or I can show you around the merchandise shops if you're more interested in that. Uh, I don't know, Max. I don't exactly have anything on me right now. What do you mean by that? You're fully closed, right? What? <laughs> I mean, I don't have any money to spend right now. Oh, don't worry about that. I'll treat you. Now, pick your place. Well, I think it'd be nicer if we... Huh. So what should I do with Max? Taste some local foods, play some games. God, I love doing all these. Oh, let's see. Taste some food. Let's save it. Oh, God. Let's do them. Let's do all of them. Oh god, my nose. My nose is itchy. Itchy nose. Oh god. Oh god, itchy nose. One second, guys. Oh my god. I don't know why. My nose was so itchy. Okay. Uh, let's taste some local snacks. Yeah! Alright. What do you like this time? Hmm, something cold might be nice. It's getting hot and crowded here. I know just the place. Max leads you to a floating wagon. It looks a bit like a white ice cream truck. You try to read the menu sign, but you couldn't seem to make out any of the words. Maybe it's a foreign script. Even though there are ice cream symbols with different colors next to each line, you still couldn't make much sense of it. You want me to choose for you? Oh, um, yeah, I guess. I'm sorry, but I can't read the menu. It's alright. The shopkeeper here comes from a country way up in the north. His family's been here for decades, or so I was told. I think he kept the menu that way to preserve the, the traditional look. The shape of the wagon itself is, uh, is native to their country. Anyways, two parfaits, please. I already knew. Yep, parfait. Yep. <laughs> Par- What? Cassian, they have parfaits in your world! <laughs> a 
parfait. It's an exotic fruit that's difficult to find. It has a very unique taste. Uh, hmm. Here you go. Two parfaits for the couple. Ooh. The shopkeeper handed you a cone filled with a pale yellow ice cream. You went ahead and gave it a taste. Mmm, mmm, mmm. What do you think, Cassian? Is it good? It's sweet and creamy, and it has this cheese-like flavor. It's almost like eating a cheesecake ice cream. Glad you like it. This is Ryan's favorite flavor, you know. He's quite obsessed with it that he tries to grow one in his own garden. Really? He likes sweet things and he does gardening? Quite unexpected, right? V very. I thought his hobby would be sportier than that. Heh. <laughs> You'd think so. He does do those things to cope. Cope? From what? Hmm. An old scar. What do you mean? It's nothing important. Let's look around more, shall we? There's still plenty of time to spare. Oh, uh, okay. Did I just touch upon a sensitive subject? They did fight the other day, but, hmm. Maybe I'll ask him again when the time is right. You both continued exploring the bazaar until it was time for the sports event. So let's go back. We're gonna go back. What? A, I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. There you go. I'm an idiot. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Play some local games. Let's play some games. Yeah. Sure. Got anything in mind? Uh, n not really. Oh, what kind of games do you have here? Well, there are several games here that you can try. Hmm, how about we go over there? Max pointed to a booth and dragged you there. <laughs> welcome, welcome! Do you have good memory? Who, me? Well, I... Then give this game a go! It's quite easy, and you can win some awesome prizes, too! Um, okay? You sat in front of the booth while Max paid the fee to the booth keeper. He then showed you nine cards with different symbols facing up. After several minutes, he then faced them down and asked you to flip the cards in a specific order. Um, okay, let's see. You tried to open the cards accordingly, but only managed to make it to the sixth one. You didn't get any prize for that. What a shame. You decided to move on from the booth and went to with Max again. Come and play again sometime! <laughs> hmm, not bad, Cassie. You got it farther than Cody and Ray. Th thanks. How about you, Max? Me? Well, you know, Alex uh, used to ace that game. Up to 21 cards. Isn't that amazing? Whoa, really? He totally dodged my question. Yeah, he's a smart guy after all. He used to go out and enjoy the festival booths with the rest of us. S seriously? Quite shocking, yeah? He wasn't always a sh he wasn't always a shut-in like how you see him these days. <laughs> well, what happened then? Hmm. Well, it's an old scar. Nothing important. Let's keep going, shall we? I still have a few more games to show you. Hmm, okay. It seems like Max didn't want to talk about this subject. Maybe it's something personal between them. I'll have to ask him again when the time is right. You both continue exploring the bazaar until it was time for the sporting event. Okay. Alright, so, alright, so, wow, okay, so I guess all of them have, like, an old scar I'm trying to cover up. Interesting. Let's go window shopping! Let's do some window sh How about we do some window shopping together? Hmm. What happened to the window in your room? Did it break? Eh, what? N no, it's just a figure of speech. You know, just visiting some shops and looking at their stuff without buying anything. Oh, well, sure, let's go then. Max took you Max took you to a bigger booth, almost three times the size of the other ones. Inside, you can find many knickknacks and souvenirs from all over the world. On display is a half-red, half-white ball, half-white ball with a button at the center, a golden glove with six different colored gems etched on top, and many, many rows of plushies. There was a dragon whose horns looked like giant yellow eyebrows and a heterochromia gray husky, a blue-eyed white dragon with blue hair, and a chocolate German shepherd. Hmm. Interesting. For some reason, they all looked oddly familiar to you. Yeah, I bet they do. You went on, you went on browsing through the other shelves, where a particular item caught your eyes, so you went to take a closer look. It seemed to be a necklace made from several fangs. Each had some sort of unique rune inscribed on it. You want to buy that? This? No, it just looked interesting to me. Hmm, I think it's from Sv Svobodia. Svobodia? Yeah, it's a place way up north. It's where Cody comes from. So you're saying Cody came a really long way to here? Yeah, he came here with his parents a while ago, actually. Anyways, this is probably some kind of traditional necklace made from a carnivorous fish's fangs. If you want to know more, ask Cody. He might know something about this. You seem to know much about him, Max. How long have you two known each other for? Quite some time. Four to five years, I think? I think his parents moved back to Svobodia once he got his job as a mercenary. 
A mercenary, huh? Yeah, that comes as a surprise to you, huh? Well, not really. I could... Oop. Back. I could tell the I could tell a bulky guy like him must have a lot of fight in him. But what happened? Why did he become a cook now? That might be because of an old scar. Nothing important. There's still a lot of souvenir stalls around here, so let's keep going, okay? Oh, okay. It seems like a sensitive subject. Maybe it's something personal between them. I should ask again when the time is right. Mm-hmm. You both continued exploring the bazaar until it was time for the sports event. Max brought you a takeaway lunch so you could enjoy it while watching the opening ceremony. Some shit's about to go down. You bidded Max goodbye as he disappeared into the backstage area where contestants gathered. You also went to find yourself an empty audience seat and waited for the ceremony to start. You were getting yourself comfortable when a familiar figure moved towards you. Oh. Oh, hey, Cassian. Fancy seeing you here. Didn't know you are a fan of sports. Oh, hey, Toby. Actually, I'm here to see Max. I'm not really that into sports, but I always like the ceremony. I see. Do you mind if I sit here? He points towards the empty seat beside you. Sure, we can watch Max together then. Yeah, about that. There's something I need to tell you. The tiger said as he promptly sat down. Hmm? About what? About Max. Here's the thing. Max is not exactly a social butterfly. Really? I thought he's quite the popular person in town. He is, but that's just the image he tries to keep up. The Max you see that's always smiling, calm, dependable, strong, dreamy. Eh? Ahem. <clears throat> So what I'm saying is that what he wa that's what he wants the people in the city to see. But you should know that deep down inside, he has an ice-cold heart that can't be easily thawed. Yeah, Toby, we all know what you're getting at. <laughs> he leaned towards you. Except for you, it seems. You see, Max usually would just brush off any new guys that tried to go going buddy-buddy with him. But you somehow bypassed all those meticulous steps of befriending him and just went straight to the touchy-feely stage. What do you mean? Oh, I saw you guys were practicing yesterday, and boy, does he act all sort of different. Um, what are you trying to say here, Toby? You're kind of creeping me out here. Here, let me just lay it out for you, alright? He's just putting up a charade with you. My guess is that he's doing all this purely out of pity or a social request for someone, a special request for someone. Do you see anyone else who's close to him beside a small number of people? Cody, Rye, Alex, me, then who else? Probably that lady up in the forest. Look, I don't mean to antagonize you, just doing you a favor and save you from a heartbreak. It changes people, you know, for the better or for the worst, usually for the latter. But I just want you to be cautious, yeah? Don't want you going crying, don't you don't want you to go crying because of some unrequited love. Oh, is that fried tomatoes? May I have some? Eh? Oh, sure thing, I guess. Is Max really like that? Is he really just doing this out of petty? He did seem to be nicer towards me after that talk Alyssa had with him. I still have no idea what she said to him, but... Could it be true? Your heart felt heavy from all the things Toby just told you. All the chatter and hollering around you became white noises. You lifted your head to see the fireworks as the opening ceremony commenced, but you couldn't really take any of it. Take any of it in. You saw Max walking up on the stage as he waved at you and Toby, who ecstatically waved back at him. You could only return the gesture rather weakly as you weren't even sure what to feel. Is it possible that Toby only said that because he likes Max too? To drive me away? Should I ask Max about this? You continued watching the event as the opening ceremony ended the first set of games started. Max seemed to be participating in what looks like a wrestling match. Toby was already standing up from his seat, shouting his heart out for Max. You weren't really sure how much how, how the match went down, but it seems like Max emerged victorious for, for the first set. You heard the announcer. You heard. You heard from the announcer that it'd be a 30-minute break before the second set commenced. So you decided to go to the rest, the restroom to clear your head. Hmm. You let out a loud sigh after splashing your face with cold water. You still felt overwhelmed with emotions, but you've at least calmed down for the time being. You're on the way back to your seat when you ran into Max along the way. Damn. Ah, there you are. I was looking for you. Toby said you might be at the restroom. Oh, yeah. I needed to wash my face. It's quite hot out, so, so I just gotta freshen up a bit is all. H how's the game going? Well, pretty good. You saw me, right? I nailed that guy to the floor. Heh, <laughs> it was quite easy, too. And then he, and then when he... He looked at Max. His expression, his smile, his enthusiasm. Is it true it's all a fake? A mere facade? What do you think, Cassian? Did I do a great job? Huh? He looked at him again, his tail wagging like crazy. Um, yeah, yeah, you, you did a great job, Max. I wish you luck for the next round. Are you alright? You seem a bit pale. 
Do you want me to escort you back to your room? No, it's fine. I just need some time to think. Oh, something on your mind? Kinda. Well, um, Max? Yeah, Cassian? Is it true that, uh... What is it? Well... He took a deep breath. Toby said a lot of things to me, and I just wanted to make sure about the things he said. So, um, is it true that... Nope. Oh, looks like break time is over. Is it okay if we talked about this after the event? Uh, oh, sure. Mm, I, I Sure, I, I guess. Uh, good luck, Max. Thanks, Cassian. I'll do my best. You quickly ran out of your sight. Huh. You let out a massive sigh before returning to your seat. Alright, guys, I'm gonna pause it right here. Ooh, we got a start of the games, and it looks like Toby is making a power play for Max. Trying to get Cassian out of the way. Well, I'm not gonna go that easy. I'll go down that easy, but... <clears throat> Sorry, something caught in my throat there. <laughs> oh, God, that sounds bad, too. <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!